So um, I hope you can all hear me. Um, but yeah, I think first off, I'd just like to tell you just a little bit about myself, how I got started. Um, I was originally born and uh, raised in London, England, and moved to um, America when I was 10 years old. Um, and that's really um, where I've been living. And now, um, how I kind of really got started, I was just always drawing cartoons. When I was in England, I found, when I was six years old, an artist's original sketchbook lying in my backyard. And I went into my backyard and picked it up, and it had portraits and landscapes and everything else in it. And I carried it with me everywhere I went, and from that point on, I started drawing. So. Um, it was um, really started from then. So I was drawing for my high school newspaper and all that. And I love drawing caricatures. So caricatures were my real background and my passion. Um, I was, like I said, drawing for the high school newspaper. I was drawing all my friends. And then when I was around 18 years old, I went to um, uh, Las Vegas and saw some caricature artists in Las Vegas at the casinos and thought, this is what I want to do. So I was going to college at the time, and I didn't like school at all, so I decided to uh, drop out of school because uh, I didn't want to be there. And I just wanted to draw caricatures, so I got hired drawing caricatures at the amusement park SeaWorld in San Diego. And that's where I got my start doing caricatures, and that's where I got all my practice. And it was really, um, all my training really started from there. So my influences were like um, Norman Rockwell, um, J.C. Liondecker, Frank Fazetta. Um, Mad Magazine was a huge influence of mine. So I had um, Jack Davis and Mort Drucker were really huge influences of mine, especially since I was drawing caricatures um, all the time. So that's where I really kind of um, learned. And then... Um, I heard that Warner Brothers was, um, um, I had met someone um, that worked at Warner Brothers and thought I'm going to submit my portfolio and try it out. So I submitted my portfolio and they gave me a test um, to design three different characters for um, the show, which was called Hysteria. And I did that test and they liked what I did. And so I got hired in 1997. Um, at Warner Brothers as a character designer and that's where it kind of really began for me that's where my career started in character design um, the one thing that I was always doing I was always drawing always carrying a sketchbook um, I feel as an artist it's really the most important thing you can do is to uh, carry a sketchbook and observe life all the time so um, I'll start off with these slides um, just to get into talking to you about that. But let me just give you a little bit of a transition from Warner Brothers. I heard that they were looking for a character designer for uh, Kevin Smith at Disney, was doing this show called Clerks, the Animated Series, and I submitted my portfolio again, uh, took a test, and they liked what I did, and I got hired for doing Clerks, the Animated Series um, there. So that was really... Um, great a great time great experience and then after that I worked on another show just um, just because they needed to place me somewhere um, it was called Weekenders it was in its second season and then um, after that I got a call from the director I worked with on Clerks who said we're doing the show Kim Possible um, can you start doing designs for it see what I came up with so that's when I started doing all the designs for Kim Possible and um, that's really where it evolved. So just did a lot of different drawings, um, working, you know, just all the time, just trying to show the directors and the creators of the show and the executives what the designs look like um, until we got approval on all the designs and that's how that began. And then after that show ended, I went and was hired over at Nickelodeon to start designing on a show called Danny Phantom. And um, from that point, I um, went back over to Disney, and then I came back over to Nickelodeon. So you go back and forth in the animation industry from one place to the next. It's kind of, um, that's really how it works. And the most important thing to have is a strong portfolio, because your portfolio represents who you are and what you do. Your portfolio becomes your diploma, and that lets people know, you know, what it is that you do so you want to make sure that you specialize in something make sure that your portfolio is specialized in 
to whether it be character design, whether it be animation, whether it be um, layouts, whether it be prop design, whether it be color design, and you want to focus on those sort of elements, let them know what you do and make sure you're versatile, make sure you have a lot of different styles within your portfolio um, because the different studios are, they have all different types of projects all the time. So they need to know that you can do the sort of show that they may be working on. So um, keep that in mind as you're putting together your portfolio and you're trying to get out there. So let me begin with um, this first slide. Um, there's something that I was doing when I was, um, I was over at Sony Feature Animation for um, about a year working on a show there. And what I would do is um, I would go with some friends at lunchtime, uh, like I said, always drawing in my sketchbook and sketch at lunchtime. And what I would do was uh, on our way back, we would look at someone that looked interesting. And if they looked interesting, we would try to would stand around them, you know, and look at them for a few minutes, you know, not that long and just try to capture like, what is it that is interesting about that person? Because they looked interesting to us in the beginning. So that's why we um, wanted to s try to remember what they look like. And then we would walk back to our desks. So it'd be maybe about 10 minutes uh, later or so. And once we did that, we um, would start drawing, we tried to recall what we saw. So it was, it's a really great exercise to do if you want to be a designer too, just to help you not always copying from photographs. Um, it's very important when you carry your books. Uh, most people I find have um, what we define, what I call um, uh, doodle books. Uh, there was an artist, C.F. Payne, um, who's a brilliant illustrator who, you know, brought this up and I really agreed with him because this is what I saw a lot was all these different artists were, you know, they carry what I call their doodle books where they're just doodling in them. They're just making up things, trying to, you know, they're drawing their little animals or this and that, but they're not really observing life. And the most important thing to do is carry a sketchbook where you can will observe life and really draw what people and things look like, draw people's hands, draw locations, whatever it may be you're interested in and try to capture that and uh, look at the back of people's heads and different things because this is where you start to gain all your knowledge. So this guy was one guy uh, that we spotted sitting, he was eating ice cream and um, you know, so I just recalled he had this really long tie. I remember he had that and I just loved the shape of his body. So, and he noticed that we were staring at him. So that's why I kind of wrote those words that were above there. So this was a memory sketch. So let's go on to the next slide, the next sketch. Um, this was the next sketch um, of another person where I was just sitting in the, you know, having lunch and saw this person just standing in line waiting to buy their lunch again. Just very interesting, unique shapes. You know, we saw him and thought, you know, he just looked like he was really broken down into two separate shapes. He just had his head and then he just had the rest of his body, which looked like this big pear shape. So he was really fun. So it's the most important thing to do too, is not always stick with drawing the same style. Don't, you know, try to, again, switch it up, experiment. That's your role as an artist is to experiment and you want to do that as much as possible. Um, try different things. If you're not familiar with uh, doing this, um, you know, or working in a different style, try it, just do it. So um, that's where this guy kind of came from. And let's go to the next slide. 